tonight, we're going to go out here and check out some ODOT projects. Not along, we'll go see what we got. We're down here in Clinton County, and I'm sitting here with Mike Lovelace, the Transportation Administrator, and we're getting ready to do a culvert installation out on State Route 73. And just want to ask Mike a few uh, questions on uh, why are we doing this particular culvert and what determines uh, the determining factor of why it needs to be replaced and what your preparation is before you actually go out there and actually start breaking ground. So if you could explain to us all uh, what all we need to do, uh, we would appreciate it. That's no problem. Well, through our inspection process, we noticed that this culvert here had a uh, low rating. Uh, we noticed that the culvert had a lot of corrosion in the bottom of it. Basically, the pipe was in pretty bad shape. Yeah. So it, it went for we needed to be replaced. So what we did, after we got, you know, got to, basically we got our materials in, got everything prepped for that as far as getting our stock in place, we notified the traffic department, safety, that we were getting ready to do a road closure. Uh, it usually takes about a two week process to get that done, doing on, depends on how much time they're working on other projects. But we took and notified them. In the meantime, when we, after we notify them, we get a hold of OOPS. We have to have at least 48 hour notice with them. They give us a reference number. We match everything up with our faxes to make sure everything's in place. At this time, last week we took and we had the road saw cutted. It's good to go. We're ready to start the excavation process. As you see here, they're taking it nice and slow because if you go too fast, it'll cause the blade to rise up and you won't make a saw cut completely through the asphalt. On this particular project, we're using a grade awl and a backhoe. Uh, due to the operational need, uh, a track hoe was unavailable, so uh, we used the grade awl and uh, backhoe. We stopped by another project uh, where they was actually using a track code to remove the asphalt. Uh, you see it's uh, nice and smooth. It's a lot more stable uh, piece of equipment. We're here with Dolores Taylor and uh, she's a highway technician too uh, down here in Clinton County and she's on this culvert replacement uh, project. and. We're sitting inside the cab of uh, her truck, and uh, Dolores, what do you do here? Uh, you know, as far as this project, and here at uh, Clinton County. I on this project here, I've been hauling in equipment. I bring in the pipe, the sand, the trencher, whatever equipment or anything that they need. I bring in here. I haul away material to Melvin's, and uh, I just whatever they need my help in, I do. And Melvin's is a stone quarry. It is a stone quarry. Oh, yes. okay. And um, what else you do here at the county? I do snow and ice. I do just about do everything. You do Weed everything. And, yeah, mowing yeah. grass. I do it all. As you see, the operator he's dragging his bucket along, nice and slow, keep it nice and level, getting as much material out of there as he possibly can, because what this does, it, it saves uh, your back uh, doing a lot of manual shoveling. See, now we're utilizing the backhoe. We're getting close to the other side. Wasn't any more room for the grade all. Utilizing a spotter, if you notice, he's guiding the truck back uh, so we can get this piece uh, inside the, uh, the truck itself. You want to be very, very careful uh, that you don't drop it too far, uh, which could actually damage uh, the bed of the dump truck. Okay, here uh, we're pulling our uh, culvert out. If you see the bottom, see we talked about the uh, we talked about the acidity in the water of how uh, it eats out a, a metal culvert. So uh, 
you could see where it was badly in need of being replaced. Here we're lowering our trench box uh, and shielding down into the uh, uh, trench uh, because anytime you, you're working over five feet you want to ensure that you have a, a, a trench box or trench shielding or shoring in place. Well we're out here we're digging and smoothing out the bottom. Uh, Operator is going to take a little break and I'm going to see if I can give it a little shot here and uh, clean up a little bit while we're uh, getting this project done. So it's hard to tell how it'll look. You know, it's been a while since I've been on one of these. So we'll, we'll just go here and give her a shot. All right. Get my old handy dandy seatbelt on here. There we go. I got my opportunity to uh, run the backhoe. Uh, I got to go get in there and take the uh, loose material out and as you see, uh, removing as much of that as I possibly could get out of there. See, I'm drawing everything to the sides, you know, to the one end. Try to get it piled up so it made it easier to remove. You see, I have a spotter actually telling me uh, and instructing me on getting this material out of here because uh, you don't want to be too close to the edge, and of course, the visibility is poor because you can't see down inside the trench. So it always helps. It's a pretty good sized culvert here. Uh, you know, uh, that we seen we took out galvanized yesterday and. Uh, we're going to be replacing with this polyurethane or plastic pipe. Uh, it's a smooth uh, wall and the life uh, uh, of this culvert would be much longer than the gal uh, galvanized. Um, and, you know, I was talking uh, with an HMA earlier and he said that uh, a lot of acidity in the water uh, causes uh, to eat and deteriorate the uh, galvanized pipe. So hopefully we have a lot better luck with uh, this uh, plastic pipe. So. As you've seen, it is, uh, it's a huge pipe and it's going to take a lot of work to get it in there. So, there we go. You see we have a ladder, uh, you know, to get out of the trench box. You, you need a means of egress, so you want to make sure you always have uh, a ladder to get out of there. See, we're doing our uh, compaction at the very bottom of the trench. Before we actually uh, put the pipe down in, we're shooting our grade, we have our transit in place, so making sure we have the right amount of uh, slope so we can get our water to run. As you can see in the background, we're uh, making our last placement of the trench box and uh, doing our compaction and uh, not much longer we'll be getting ready to install uh, the culvert and start compaction in and around the culvert. Here we're continuing our compaction. We started at the bottom. We're bringing it up into four to six inch lifts. Okay, I'm staying here with Mike, and uh, if you noticed, uh, he was uh, running this uh, tamper here. Uh, Mike, what, uh, what kind of process is uh, as far as why are you running this tamper? Well, we put a lot of stone in here and a little bit of water. There's a lot of voids, and we're trying to get some water in there and fill all the voids in, so there's not a lot of other spaces in there. Okay. So, it's, uh, it's is there a certain amount of lift that you do? I mean, is it, or, you know, I see you, uh, the the water, what's that water do to it when you when you flush the water in top of the sand? It compacts it, keeps it, this sand will really turn up, be really solid once you get that water in there. It'll make it real solid. 
this get the boys yeah. out. He's 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 telling me I'm I'm learning something here. He knows, <laughs> knows he's uh he he knows how to run this machine. I mean he goes home at night like this. See? So yeah. All right. I'm shaking, my arms are burning. <laughs> yeah, arms are burning. All right. Well, thank you. I won't, I won't hold you up here. All right. I'm going to have to continue. All right. <laughs> As you see, we add material you know, as we go up in these four to six uh, inch lifts. You see, we also have a spotter that you know lets them know, lets the operator know how much material is actually going down uh, into the trench. You see, the crew member is getting all nice and level for the compaction. Uh, to ensure, like I said, we keep the uh, lift process as even as we can. As you see, we're adding the water. Uh, like when I mentioned uh, talking to Mike Wiswell there earlier, talked about how it helps compact and fill the voids uh, in the material. And then continuing the compaction uh, to make it rock solid. As you see, uh, we have some voids underneath the asphalt. You want to make sure that you get that material back underneath there and uh, you get it compacted because uh, if you don't, it will create uh, voids which then will make the uh, asphalt collapse. So you want to get that in there and, and get it compacted as best you can. We traveled across the state to look at another project where they was utilizing another type of backfilling procedure. We traveled down here to Columbiana County here in District 11 and uh, we're going to call for an installation project here today and we're going to utilize uh, a different type of backfill which is a flowable fill, a low strength order, in other words called uh, LSM and I'm standing here with Darcy Stitt and she's the transportation administrator here and she's going to kind of explain the process to us. So, Darcy, explain to me uh, what kind of process you have here. Sure, Carl. Thank you. Um, we decided to start using low-strength mortar in our culvert pipes because utilizing this method, we can get one pipe installed per day. So, we prepare the site, the hole, um, run our grade on the line in the hole, lay the pipe, then we tie the pipe down with either rebar or we might use some old signpost, steel signposts. Tie that down in four different spots to make sure that the pipe doesn't float. The concrete will get underneath the ribs of the pipe. You can float that pipe and then of course you have to start all over again. So we tie that down and then we pour, um, typically we pour a 100, uh, LSM 100, but today we're using a 200. We're going to get a faster set on that. Uh, we let that set for about three hours. Um, plate it, then in three hours we'll pour a fast set concrete on top of that and we'll plate that, let that set about four hours to make sure that it's set good and then we'll pull those plates and traffic will run on it and we have a smooth ride, pipe doesn't move, uh, we saved tons of man hours um, using this method instead of the old method of compacting three or four material in lifts. Um, and typically that would be a two-day operation. This is one day and we're out of there. Well, it sounds like this is another good process then. Well, I tell you what, I thank you for your time, Darcy, and uh, it looks like they're doing a fine job back here. So. And they are. Thank you, Carl. All right, thank you. Hey, as you can see, uh, we got the culvert in place. Looks nice. Uh, we're actually set right down in the ditch right now. Nice, put together real well. And uh, if you can notice here, we actually have some water as we uh, make our trip through. And uh, you see it's running the right way, so they got their uh, grade the way it needed to be. So I feel like I'm a 
ground mold going through my tunnel. But uh, here we are. We have two joints actually put together. And like I said, all the way through, nice and straight. And here we are. Before adding the asphalt, you want to put down a nice layer of tack coat, as you see here. Now we are adding our asphalt, getting everything level, put out nice and smooth. Say we bring that asphalt up in uh, in lifts as well, uh, you know, four to six inches, making sure that you have everything raked out level. At this point here, uh, we're doing our final lifts on our asphalt and pretty well has a crew uh, pretty much whipped, ready for a good shot of water because it, it wears you out, this asphalt's hot and uh, you want to make sure no one gets overheated, especially in uh, extreme warm temperatures. You see the crew, they're stretching the string across to ensure the asphalt is level. And now we're cooling down the asphalt to get ready to let the traffic flow. And as you see, we made a trip back down. You see the stones in place, grass seed is growing, and our traffic's flowing through. Job well done. Always remember, before starting any culvert installation project, that you start by reviewing the Construction and Material Specification Manual, items 603 and 300. The Construction Inspection Manual of Procedures, items 603 and 300, and also the Roadway Standard Construction Drawings.